You want the microphone? Okay, I'll use a microphone. This may be awkward for what I've got in mind. Hello again, everybody. It's uh, nice to address you again. This part of the evening uh, is dedicated to a tribute to the immortal memory of Robert Burns. Burns was born in Ayrshire on the west coast of Scotland in 1759, on the 25th of January, 1759. And he died tragically young, 37 years later. But we don't meet up here tonight to, to mourn the passing of the man, but rather to uh, celebrate the rich legacy he left us all and his many hundreds of poems and songs. Uh, there's so much I could say about Robert Burns, but as I say, I think it, the best tribute I can pay is to share uh, part of his poetry with you. And I'd also like to share a story with you, which is ve a very Scottish story. Uh, it's about a guy who worked in the distillery in Scotland, and uh, tragically, he fell into a vat of whiskey and drowned. And it was a dreadful tragedy. He was a well-liked young man. And one of the managers uh, was tasked with going to see his wife and breaking the news to her. So he made his way down to the house. He says, Mary, I've got some terrible news for you. He says, Willie's dead. He drowned in a vat of whiskey. I'm ever so sorry. Everybody's heart broken. She says, oh, just tell me one thing, John. Just, did he go quick? He says, I don't know if he went quick, but he went out three times to go to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> now, as you know, ladies and gentlemen, Burns was a great romantic poet. And I just want to share one of his shorter poems with you. Because it's, it's you know, it's genius is its simplicity, basically. It's called A Red Red Rose. Oh, my love is like the red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. My love is like the melody so sweetly played in tune. As fair art thou, my bonny lass, so deep in love am I. And I will love you still, my dear, while all the seas gang dry. While all the seas gang dry, my dear, and the rocks melt with the sun. And I will love you still, my dear, while the sands of time shall run. Fare thee well, my only love and fare thee well a while and I will come again my love though it were 10,000 miles now thank you ladies and gentlemen now we all know we all know that the path the path to true love that doesn't always ring, run smoothly does it and Billy, Billy Nielsen's asked me to give you a warning tonight by the way <laughs> Billy I've got to say I've got to uh, let everybody know what's happening. There's a scam going on, and it's targeted on men, single men, in Tesco's car park locally in the Milton Keynes area. And what happens if there's two very attractive East European girls, lovely looking women, low tops, high skirts, very attractive, and they approach single men loading their cars up in Tesco car park. And what happens, they ask them for a lift to the other side of town, and in return for that, they don't want any money, but they'll wash their windscreens down, what have you. So if the fellas agree, they get in the car, one in the front, one in the back. And shortly after they head off, the one in the front says, could you just pull in for a moment at the side here? So the fella pulls in at the side. And she starts performing a sexual act on him. And that's when the scam happens, because when his trousers are down... The one in the back steals his wallet out of his pocket. Billy apparently got caught out last Monday, Wednesday, and then twice on Friday. So take care out there, okay? <laughs> it's the big one at Kingston, by the way. <laughs> So I want to share a story with you as well about uh, a very a fella who was very very uh, like self confidence for a bit want a better word they like self confidence and what happened he uh, his friend comes round to see him he says forget the pub and night let's go clubbing take up the dance he says oh I don't dance he says you know me he says I'm hopeless I've got no rhythm he says just come up he says it's easy he says no I don't dance I'm hopeless he says look. I'll tell you, there's a really simple tip. 
If you listen to me, the woman will love you. He says, oh, what's the tip? What's the tip then? He says, just try it. All you need to do is just think of it like this. 10p, 10p, 50p, pound. 10p, 10p, 50p, pound. Just get into that rhythm. 10p, 10p, 50p, pound. 10p, 10p, 50p, pound. Is this working for you girls, by the way? <laughs> but anyway, is it there? So they go up the dance, and they go to the dance hall, and uh, sure enough, he's on the dance floor with his newfound confidence. 10p, 10p, 50p, pound. 10p. And this girl approaches him. He says, you're a lovely mover. He says, oh, thank you very much. He says, eh, could I dance with you? He says, sure, sure. Totally amazed. By the way, they have a dance and she says, you're such a good mover. Would you like to come back to my place tonight? I live alone. He says, oh, I certainly would. With his mate's words ringing in his ear, just remember the rhythm. 10 feet, 10 feet, 50 feet. So they get home, she pours him a glass of wine, puts the music on. She says, you're such a good mover. I say, oh, thank you. <laughs> she says, let's go up to the bedroom. He says, oh, yes, certainly. So up they go to the bedroom, up the stairs. Remember the rhythm. <laughs> he gets in there, she rips the clothes off him, drags him into bed. He goes, oh, bugger this, he says. One pound seventy, one pound seventy, one pound seventy. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would finish, I'd like to finish off this part of the evening, I'll draw it to a close, with a poem not by Robert Burns. It's actually, which is quite traditional at Burns Suppers, you know, I've, I've uh, recited poems from Kipling and Wordsworth and various others here at this venue. But uh, this is by Lord Byron. I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but Lord Byron was brought up, he spent his formative years in uh, the north e northeast of Scotland until he was 10, and then he came into the title, and he was dispatched out to London to begin his classic education and everything in London. But obviously the memories of those formative years in Scotland stuck with him, and he composed a poem called Dark Loch Nagar. The Loch Nagar sits at the bottom of uh, Four Peaks and the Cairngorms in Scotland. And it's a, a beautiful but a wild place. And as I say, his, his youthful years there obviously stuck with Byron all his life. He composed a poem, uh, Dark Loch Nagar, and it goes like this, ladies and gentlemen. Away ye gay landscapes, or ye gardens of roses, in you let the minions of luxury rove. Restore me the rock where the snowflake reposes, though still they are sacred to freedom and love. Ah, there my young footsteps in infancy wandered. My cap was a bonnet, my cloak was a play. On chieftains long perished, my memory pondered, as daily I strode through the pine-covered glade. I sought not my home till the day's dying glory gave pace to the rays of the bright polar star. For fancy was cheered by traditional story disclosed by the natives of Dark Loch Nagar. Years have rolled on, Loch Nagar, since I left you. Years must elapse ere I tread you again. Nature of verdure and flowers has bereft you. Still are you dearer than Albion's plain. England, thy beauties are tame and domestic to one who has roved on the mountains of Park so far. Oh, for the crags that are wild and majestic, the steep frowning glories of dark Loch Nagar. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>